Yes, it's called God Said Not Yet, One Man's Experience with Terminal Cancer. About 10 years ago, in June of 2000, I was diagnosed with cancer. And initially I was told, while there are no guarantees, it was a very treatable type of cancer. And what I had was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was in my lungs, despite the fact I'd never been a smoker. And it was described by the doctor as being a bunch of little nodules. There wasn't just a lump or a tumor. And so basically the only course of treatment they could pursue was chemotherapy because there wasn't a tumor they could cut out or um, use radiation on. And I went through about five months of the traditional chemo treatment. And initially it worked. It seemed to work. I was getting a little better. But then about five months in, I took a turn for the worse and started going downhill rapidly. And so they, they did tests. They did like x-rays and CT scans and, and tests like that. But the problem with those tests is that they can't really tell them that it's cancer they're seeing, just that there's an obstruction there. So in order to confirm that it was still cancer and not scar tissue or an infection or um, other things, they had to do what's called an open lung biopsy. And when I was first diagnosed, I had to have an open lung biopsy, which is basically an operation they have to cut you open and go in and get a piece of tissue out of your lung to do tests on. And this second open lung biopsy I had that when I was five months in, um, while the first one went very smoothly and I didn't expect any complications, the second one, I guess, because my condition was much worse, during the procedure, I actually stopped breathing and had to be revived in the operating room during the middle of the procedure. And that was quite an experience. It was, it was almost like a scene from a horror movie because I woke up and here I was on the table in the middle of the operating room just writhing in pain and just screaming and crying and you know begging for them to, to make it stop. And I, I didn't know what had happened or what was going on and I didn't find out until later. Well, the, the next step was because the standard chemo was not working, um, was that they had to, they basically recommended trying the bone marrow transplant. And just a little detail on that, I think most people don't really understand it because when I first heard bone marrow transplant, I'm thinking a transplant. So I'm thinking that it's just all about having somebody's bone marrow transplanted into you and that helps your body fight the cancer. But that's not what it is. What it is is the bone marrow transplant is essentially an extremely strong, powerful dose of chemotherapy. And it's so powerful that it destroys your body's abilities to make stem cells. It basically destroys your, your bone marrow for a time period. And without that, every day you'll, you'll die. And so you have to have bone marrow from a donor to transplant into you so that you will um, survive until your body can start producing it again. And up until the time that the bone marrow transplant was recommended. Whatever the doctors recommended or said that we needed to do, I just did without question. Didn't, um, didn't ask for a second opinion, didn't doubt anything they said. I just figured what, they're the doctors, they know what they're doing. And when they recommended us for the bone marrow transplant, we had to go down to the University of Florida. We were living in Florida at the time, but the University of Florida Cancer Center for a consultation. And they basically told us all the, uh, you know, the statistics and the, what to expect with the bone marrow transplant. And it wasn't very encouraging because only about 30% of the people who go through it have their cancer go into remission, and about 30% of the people actually don't survive it. They either die from the chemo treatment or from complications that arise afterward. And in my case, they told me because of the condition of my lungs, they said, you face an even greater probability of mortality. And so this was a situation where they were basically saying, you may not survive this, but it's your only hope. If you don't do this, you're definitely going to die from cancer. Um, yes, I did. Um, we have one son. We have one child, a son. He's 11 and a half now. And so when I was diagnosed, he was just a little over a year old. And when they were recommending me for the bone marrow transplant, he was not quite two years old, he was about to turn two. And so for him, he didn't really, you know, understand what was going on. He was just a happy-go-lucky two-year-old and uh, and he was, he, he never showed any signs of being affected by it. 
Um, but for me, it was difficult because, and, and I, I talk about this in the book, but when I first was diagnosed, I, I never really had any fear, even if it turned out to be terminal. I just, God kind of reminded me that because I placed my faith in His Son Jesus, that even if I died from this, that I'd be with Him. And so I had no reason to be afraid. But when I thought about when it got, got to when I was doing worse and they were recommending a bone marrow transplant, and when I thought about leaving my son without his father, that was almost more than I could take. Um, just between thinking about him growing up without a father and, um, and on a more, I guess, a more personal or selfish note, I, I didn't want to think about the possibility of me missing seeing him growing up. And then, and then there's the whole thing of most, you know, people you don't remember past five or six years old or whatever. And so I knew that if I died when he was two years old, by the time he was a teenager, in his memory it would be like I had never even existed. And so that was very difficult on me. And I remember, um, I remember praying when I was at that point and it wasn't looking good and just praying to God and saying, Lord, you know, I'm completely submitted to your will, and if it's your will, if it's my time to go, then go ahead and take me. But I really don't want to leave my son alone in this world to grow up without me. So I just, um, that was a very, a very difficult time in regards to that.